How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to everyone's absolute favorite installment of the Riddle School franchise. There's more doodads than there's ever been at the bottom here. A true sign of quality. This button obviously proceeds to the main menu. Look at that intensity. The, the commitment, the dedication, he's mapped it all out in a blueprint here. The, it's the same photo already recycling assets the same one with the helmet and the clown makeup this one is quite quizzical and here he's straight up escaping quit quitting <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that before I just decided to like I, I clicked once and just started spam clicking a little bit that's amazing I don't think I've ever <laughs> had that come up I've never done it the disclaimer I'm pretty sure is the slightly different slightly different than it has been. After being identical in the first three games, that kind of threw me off. None of the people or places in this game were based off of real people or places, and any relation between the events transpiring in this game and the experiences of others are entirely coincidental and unintentional. Not that I'd really go to a school called Riddle School and try to interview a bald college student about whether he escapes school. In case anyone was confused as to whether or not this was real. A quick gander at the fun facts. Took 10 months, 600 library items, 20, 48 rooms. There was 22 in the last one. So many frames, a bunch of scenes. I made this finale to the Riddle School series because I've probably gotten more messages in my Newgrounds PM inbox and more comments on my user page blog posts about Riddle School 4 than anything else. I said I was never going to make this game, but that was simply a diversion until I finally unleashed this beast. Now that it's out, I certainly won't make any more. So here it is, finally ready for our indulgence, our full possible enjoyment, accessing, analyzing map system, which <laughs> I always think that's like a pretty cool effect the way it scans in like that. Analyzation process complete, which like really the way you draw things in Flash, it's a pretty easy effect to recreate, but still is an effective effect. I just personally like the look of it. Three A plates plus 61, eight and three quarters times the square root of 4.61B. That just makes me think of like Leo and Satan when Satan wigs out over the complicated math problem. Diz, we actually got Diz hanging out. For, he's become an actual character. Smiley with the red hoodie. Usually she wears orange. Greg, he's actually in class for once. Five, actually in class for once. Zach, b by far, looks the most different. I guess him and Smiley both look quite a bit different, but Zach is, like, totally different. There's also the dirt and the grass, trash can, window, and don't even know what the teacher is. Don't bend the rulers. The rules. Bunch of math posters. And a thermostat and 12 for some reason, and literally no matter what you click on for anyone who's unfamiliar with the payoff of this game, anything, doesn't matter what you click on, a hole just opens up <laughs> into like, I don't know, the center of the earth, and just rockets fell down into oblivion. Truly terrible, truly devastating, <laughs> just dead, hard dead. Really, people had just been pestering John so much about making another game, and he was just like, you know what? No. <laughs> Phil's teacher, Mr. Munch, was the original architect of Riddle University. The school was built above a long pit of lava that he himself dug near an active underwater volcano. His plan to murder Phil Eggtree to forever rid him of this world succeeded. It was a pretty effective plan. Pretty fail-safe, it seems like and no one cared. Like Bond villains and stuff could learn a thing or two about that effective, decisive action. Every other student of Riddle University eventually died from car wrecks, old age, and unforeseen diseases. Each one on their deathbed whispered their final wish. I, I like how he just killed off everyone. Please don't let there be any more Riddle School games. The fact that he like also kills off this, all the sub characters and stuff as well is pretty funny. Stay tuned after the credits to see your time. Apparently, he carried that forward. The idea of having yourself in every part of the credits. If anything, he took that a, a step further and is now, rather than just doing it, 
like unironically and just like that's how everyone did it now it's like an ironic he's, he's making fun of that <laughs> idea of credit over crediting yourself i should say people just hounded john hounded him to make another game which is something he then uh, experienced once more in life with people hounding him to make uh one week at fumpties or another fumpties game which amazingly now we have the news that like scott cawthon is like paying fan artists of the Freddy series to make additional installments of their fan games. Just as every book has a start and a finish, a series must have a beginning and an end. I deliberately sucked all the room for another sequel out of this series so that it too may end. But now, now Scott is literally paying these people to make other installments, so One Night at Flumpty's 3 is happening, which is kind of crazy. Don't get your hopes up, Riddle School as a series is over, but not in this game. There is actually, as everyone now knows, Riddle School 5 and Riddle Transfer 1 and 2. It just, John was just drained, you know, and, and just not wanting to make more of this series, which is kind of understandable. The kid's like, he's like a teen at the time, and this is all people can talk about just hounded and he just wanted to decisively end it there in my interview with him in that flashlight episode where i talk about the history of the series this was it in his mind and i think it was his his mom who basically said like hey maybe that's a little too extreme like maybe you want to give yourself some some freedom and and maybe like consider i don't know the the larger ramifications of ending things so aggressively and so instead, instead what he did is he released this game on April 1st, and on April 2nd released what is now Riddle School 5, which is kind of amazing, because for like a day, everyone was like, come on, man, that's, that's horrible, that's so awful. It, it reminds me just now having talked to Puffballs United around the Henry Sickman franchise, come fleeing the complex i think it was or infiltrating the airship one of those there's the betrayed ending and like in his mind he was like you know what if i never get around to making another game i'm just gonna tell people that henry stickman died <laughs> and that's why there's not more of the series it's like just too much pressure it's too much pressure in a a full working game development environment to like live up to a long running franchise often and all of a sudden you're like 14 15 years old and people are like when's the next game and that's gonna mess with your head a bit real fun facts special features so back back in the main menu there's a few other quick things the real facts changed for accuracy after you beat the game <laughs> there was the fake facts took like two days which i think he had drawn that first room and actually had plans for it and an idea of where the story was gonna go then shelved it forever and then much, much later was like, you know what? I'm just going to kill Phil. <laughs> so that he, he was able to just like utilize this other stuff he had drawn. And that's why that gap between drawing that, delaying everything, deciding to end it, and then deciding to make Riddle School 5. That's why the art is so wildly different because he just had like a new vision in mind. There is uh, not many library items, map, all that. I remember when I went to the San Diego Comic Con for the first time back in 2008, Tom Fulp asked me if I had plans to make Riddle School 4, to which I said something along the lines of, I'm thinking about making a fourth one. At some point after I started making it, I lost motivation, and at the same time, people started making urgent requests for a fourth game. So I decided, even though I told my fans I'd never make the game, that I'd go ahead and make this. As I type this now, I have no clue what the reaction of the new grounds public will be, but I hope they enjoy playing it as much as I enjoyed making it. I laughed so hard. <laughs> I'm glad he enjoyed the fake out and like that, the like kind of spiteful energy that goes along with that, which we now know that he, he took it a step further or whatever. But like, I think that first day people were pissed. And then the next day in like retrospectively, they're like, oh, Okay, Riddle School 4 is funny. <laughs> what happened to all the characters? How the life of every character since the first Riddle School game turned out? Fred, a male, favorite thing, doing nothing, least favorite thing, doing something. 
Fred didn't really like school, but he thought it was wise to stay in school anyway and make the best grades he could, while not doing very much. He grew up and took many effortless occupations, such as music conductor, substitute teacher, and abstract artist. Wow, way to just demean so many career paths at once. One day, he fell asleep face first in a vat of paint. You can guess what happened. He got a, a fun, like, tiger face paint. <laughs> just cool, like, fair paint. Smiley, female, favorite thing, education, least favorite thing, distractions. That might be obsessive. That's, like, problematically dedicated to school. Smiley had a legitimately good life. She grew up with perfect hundreds in every one of her classes and had a long-lasting career in biomedical sciences. She got married to the perfect man who just so happened to have a smiley face for a head just like her. They spent the rest of their l days together living happily in a treehouse in a beautiful forest. Well, that's nice for her. Zack, anything not cold, freezing into ice. <laughs> Zack was so- wait, he- he likes things that aren't cold. Yes, that makes sense. It seems like he would aggressively hate cold things at this point. Zack was so determined not to be cold anymore that he bought a plane ticket to the tropics midway into his first year of college. Right after a volcanic island, right above a volcanic island, the plane ran into a bad bit of turbulence and Zack ended up crashing through a window. He fell into an erupting volcano and froze to death. <laughs> his body- just like rises to meet the occasion. It's like an X-Men power or something that no matter how much heat you throw at him, he'll have the cold to counter it. Funny that he also died in a volcano though, not just Phil, they have that in common. Richie, he likes collecting, dislikes getting stuck. Richie dropped out of high school, wishing he hadn't paid so much attention to collecting stuff. He was mugged in a dark alley and woke up trapped in a smelly dumpster. Nobody ever found him. <laughs> This, the bio thing is actually reminding me a lot of how they brought that back and they brought that as a new thing in the Henry Stickman collection. The, the way that his favorite thing is collecting, you give him buttons. His least favorite thing, getting stuck. He was stuffed in a locker. Like, uh, there's this funny idea of basing the entire bio around the three lines of dialogue and ten seconds of interaction we have with these characters. Uh, I really... It's a similar joke in both games now, and I, I really I think it's funny. His favorite thing is designing shirts. His least favorite thing is being unjustly sued. Which I wonder what he was sued for. For making shirts that are too similar to other shirts? Five sold t-shirts online for a living, and his talent was eventually realized by a big graphic designer company. Design. He made the mistake of asking for a slightly larger sum of money, and the company ripped him off and sued him. I was put in jail for the next five years and not once for the rest of his life did he have enough money to sue them back. I hope everything in his life happened in fives, but that was just a long-term payoff. 808, Bob. Oh, I didn't realize he was five's dad. Favorite thing, dusting. Least favorite, idiots. He insisted on being the janitor at Riddle Elementary School because he loved to clean so much until his son was unfairly sued by a t big t-shirt company. He realized he would need a better paying job and ended up being a garbage boy in France. He was having so much fun that he forgot his son existed. Oh, that's brutal. The Riddle School G 2 janitor never had a name. He likes to criticize, dislikes cheesy pencils. The janitor was locked in his own closet in the Riddle Middle School, which I love that. I don't think I've ever heard Riddle Middle School said out loud and it's, it's great. They should have leaned harder into that. One day, not long before the school was closed down and was replaced with a new one, he ate his mop, drank his dirty mop water, and nibbled on his hat as he was stuck in the darkness of the closet. The last sound he ever heard was the sound of a wrecking ball smashing the walls. The Riddle School 3 janitor. He likes unclogging toilets, dislikes whoever clogs them. He claimed he could hear a pipe problem from a mile away, and that was in fact true. His uncanny ability to hear toilet clogs earned him a television show reputation as the perfect-eared plumber. The show was cancelled after two years because it was realized nobody had ears. Furious, the janitor leapt off a bridge. Somehow it lasted two years, despite being a terrible premise and nobody having ears? Everyone can hear, apparently. That premise would still make sense. Maybe you just gotta work on your marketing. Workshop the title, because that's probably what was confusing people. Mr. Calm. 
He likes math, even though he's bad at it. And dislikes being forgetful. Oh, there's something horrible about that. There's something tragic that he loves math, but he can't remember it. Mr. Calm was never a very smart person. After the first Riddle School game, which is all of a sudden acknowledgement of it being games, he learned about how small the percentage of drinkable water on the planet there was. He decided right then to never drink anything again. The end. Mrs. Coffee. Likes coffee, dislikes being corrected. Was never a very smart person. She told Mr. Calm that nearly all the world's water was drinkable, but then she realized she only drank coffee and wasn't really sure how much straight up water was drinkable. So she went to the beach because there's lots of water in the ocean and she drank as much as she possibly could. The end. <laughs> like how he's just. The end. The end. Whatever. Just forget about it. It's done. <laughs> Favorite thing is coffee. We got a fellow coffee lover in Miss Green. Dislikes cleaning after cows, which she must be the one who owned a cow. Miss Green once drank 99 cups of coffee. On the 100th cup, she died of caffeine overdose. Random teacher. Likes yelling, dislikes people. This teacher once screamed at a school student so loudly that the walls of the room she was in collapsed around her. Nobody knew what to put on her tombstone because nobody knew her name. <laughs> The commitment to never naming that character is great. Mr. Oboe likes English, dislikes his own name. That's sad as well. Mr. Oboe was getting ready to sit down one night at a school play about knights and horses. He was told before the show to hold a sword, which was one of the props. It wasn't a real sword, but ironically, he still died from it because the sword was made of allergy medicine, and Mr. Oboe was horribly allergic to that. I can't even... Too much <laughs> back up. There's too much going on there. It's a, what? The, what did I just read? Is Greg sleep? His favorite thing is sleep. He dislikes nightmares. Yikes! I hope he doesn't have like recurring night terrors or sleep paralysis or anything. He was asleep for 18 of the first 20 years of his life. One day he woke up and realized how much he had aged, and after panicking, decided to move on. <laughs> Ah, well, panicking's not going to get me anywhere. He got a driver's license, was on his way to the grocery store, and had a fatal wreck sleeping at the wheel. Damn, man, you didn't get up, like, didn't fit in all your sleeping beforehand? Mrs. Sleep. She likes to sleep, dislikes being awake. She once got married and had a son named Greg. Eventually, she died sleepwalking off a cliff. Don't think any more about that. Mr. Sum. He likes gardening. Dislikes getting robbed. Mr. Sum was a math teacher for his entire life. He was gardening on the roof of a, of a building and was suddenly mugged by a bear who ate him 30 minutes later. Man, he got robbed and eaten? No wonder. No, but, like, I'm sure someone asked him in between those two events, that 30 minute window, by the way, what's your least favorite thing? I just got robbed. I think that's probably my least favorite thing. Terrible, terrible experience. Wouldn't wish it on anyone. Little did he know, he was about to be eaten. If you would have asked him then, pretty sure getting eaten would have been his least favorite thing. Mr. Soggy. Favorite thing? Being able to see. Least favorite thing? Not being able to see. I <laughs> like how often people's favorite and least favorite are just opposites. He couldn't find his glasses, so he was on his way to get new glasses and got in a fatal car wreck because he couldn't see. Mr. Reed, being able to read, Dislikes loud people. Was reading a comic book in the Riddle High School Library. It doesn't roll off the way Riddle Middle does. He was reading the words, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, were ne words will never hurt me, when he got a nasty paper cut and lost every inch of blood in his body. I'm not used to measuring blood in inches. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a weird thing. I can't wait to drink these four inches of coffee. I just say it's not 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 regular. Mrs. Flask, she likes inventing, dislikes false alarms. She invented a flying chair and discovered there's no air in space. Miss Count likes anything but monkeys, dislikes monkeys. Monkey hater Miss Count was bored at her home and decided to look for games on the internet. She found Riddle School 3, which she proceeded to beat twice in a row. Not long after, she was put in an insane asylum, whispering wildly something about a monkey doll curse. Which I'm glad I, we played the game twice to see what the hell that joke is. Glad to have fully been able to understand that. Mrs. Oddverb likes making others smile, 
dislikes being called a guy. Oh my god. Okay, so hopefully, probably, likely, a bunch of people in the comments, oh, like, reviews and things, or talking about the game, got that wrong, like, multiple times. She was very tired of people talking, taking one look at her, at her and thinking she was a guy. So she went berserk and set fire to a shoe store. There's our continuation of the fires in each game. Kind of not really. School never started on fire. I guess the giant volcano under the school is the fourth game's fire. So that weird thing is consistent. It's maintained across all four games, barely, kind of a little bit. <laughs> she stole a small boat and sailed away from all civilization, never to be seen again. Mrs. Mooses. She likes sarcasm, dislikes people who don't listen, was at a bank, and a bank robbery suddenly took place. Was it a bear? The robber told her to get down on the ground. She said the ground was awfully dirty and it wouldn't be good for her new dress. She was shot multiple times and her dress was ruined. <laughs> Mr. Ch cheese, cheese Chin Question. Mr. Question. Oh my god, I knew there was a pun there. And whenever when I played Riddle School 1, I couldn't remember what it is. It's Mr. Question. Ugh, I finally, finally came to mind. Favorite thing, getting in fights. Least favorite, losing a fight. Former principal of Riddle Elementary School was put in prison for life because he physically beat a student's head in. That's horrific. <laughs> Mr. Mister. Favorite thing, looking important. Least favorite thing, broccoli ice cream. I mean, I'd have to try it. Don't knock it till you try it. He tried it, he knocked it. The counselor at Riddle Middle was robbed of all his possessions unexpectedly. Lots of robbery in whatever town all of this is taking place in. Several weeks after the event, Mr. Mister noticed he didn't have a house. He died of starvation right after that because he also apparently didn't know he had no food. Wow, this guy's pretty clueless. Mr. Potato, he likes video games, dislikes real life. Discovered the magic of video games right before Riddle School 3. He did nothing but play video games long after Riddle School 3. He died happily right after beating a game called Riddle School 3. Six feet under, he's still holding his favorite video game controller. Well, it sounds like he enjoyed his life. Joe, his favorite thing is himself. His least favorite thing is not having toilet paper. Almost forgot about this kid again. Joe didn't make it to college. His grades were terrible. He thought to himself, you know, I wonder what gasoline tastes like. Huh. <sighs> yeah, maybe not college material. His will stated that he wanted to be cremated after his death. What his friends didn't know was that his stomach was still full of gasoline. And it doesn't mix well with fire. That's horrible. That's, like, terrifying to think of a body getting cremated and, like, turning into a bomb. That's the most gru gruesome graphic thing ever. Oh my god. I don't think Diz has pupils in the, like, future games, and it looks ridiculous. It looks like he's kind of bug-eyed and, like, his eyes are crossing outwardly. Don't know anything about him. Supposedly a foreign exchange student, Diz popped up into Riddle University a single time, and after that was as if he completely disappeared from existence. Chub Munch likes eating, dislikes not being able to move. Well, sorry, bud, you're gonna have to, like, work, work forwards on that, like, put some effort in. That's a, it's like a solvable thing. It'll, it'll, it won't be easy, but you can get there. Chubb stopped eating right after Riddle School 4 for the rest of his life, simply because he got so big his cheeks covered up too much of his mouth for him to eat anything else. He lived an entire century before he stopped eating, after he stopped eating because of his metabolism. It is rumored Earth's most devastating earthquakes are caused by Chubb struggling to move. Yikes. Mrs. Munch actually likes serving food. She actually likes her job, which is nice. Dislikes having an obese son. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's another one of these like sad kind of real ones where she's just like, oh, I just wish my poor boy had a, a normal life. She loves to serve food, but she felt like she served her son Chubb too much and she didn't know what to do. She discussed her internal struggle with her husband, Mr. Munch, and he said she should give all of Chubb's food to him. She soon realized she had a terrible husband and divorced him, feeding her son more than ever. Until he, you know, eventually stopped. There's like a, a point where those meet up and it becomes a thing. Mr. Munch! He likes to murder people, dislikes people. Devastated by his wife's decision of divorce. Okay, we're getting some real, like, deep-seated background to these characters all of a sudden. 
she started devising a plan to take the life of every one of her friends and acquaintances. He realized he didn't know as much about his former wife as he thought he did, and the only person he could remember her taking to is a talking to is a kid named Phil Eggtree. He killed Phil and later died by overeating. And Phil, favorite thing, logical thinking, dislikes falling into lava pits. Phil only went to college because he figured it had to be better than elementary, middle, and high school. He went to the newly built Riddle University because it was local, it was cheap, and he didn't have any particular plans for the rest of his life. So it wouldn't matter what classes he took. At first he thought this Riddle school was just like the other three he escaped from. Just when he considered trying to make his fourth escape, he found out it was completely different. And for anyone currently in any of these schools, considering university, you know, it's not for everyone, it's expensive and all those things, but also at the same time, it's like you really find your people in university, some of like your best friends, it's just easier to connect with people and pick your friend group and like find people with the same interests as you, so it's really good for that reason. There is a commentary track, the making of, there's, like, maybe I won't go through all this. Uh, there's, like, funny ideas of planning to kill him. Plan to kill Phil, lol, rhyme. <laughs> Build a time machine, mm, too difficult. Dig a hole into a lava stream, it rhymes and is also effective. Build a college on top of it, request being a teacher there, and arrange seating chart for Phil to be in the hole. We've got a lava pit, underwater volcano. Uh, great, great plans all around. Floor is less thick. Set tiny explosives with a remote control. Bald looks like this. Always wears green. He needs to sit. To, uh, he needs to sit in the desk closest to the door so I can kill him. Killed Phil. Now what? Is that kind of like Kill Bill? I guess maybe. That is not the thing I thought it was. I thought there was a thing in the game that talked about like rejected Riddle School games. I don't know where that that's buried in. That might be buried in Riddle School 5 somewhere, perhaps. And with that, I think I've looked at literally everything. There's the audio commentary. Hey, I'm John Bro, and this is the commentary for the Riddle School 4 ending, because I wanted to balloon the file size and make it look like the same size as Riddle School 3 or something <laughs> similar. Um, I wanted to make a commentary just because it seemed like it would be a funny idea to have for the game, because most of the game is a movie. That's a really and good idea, actually, to trick people. I would have to make a commentary better than the one for Pain on the Brain 3, because that one sucked. And he he committed to that more than I thought. I didn't I, I didn't realize it was going to be like a multi-five-minute long thing or whatever. But I like the idea that, like, a few, like, observant people might notice that the file size for this is like one twentieth of the size of Riddle School 3, so the commentary track's a funny way to inflate that. Wow, who would have thought that a game that takes like four seconds, like you know, you skip the intro and then you click a thing, boom, damn, it's over. However long the credits take is how long, <laughs> how long the game takes. Who thought I could stretch that out as much as I did? I swear, it's not intentional. I've been accused of that before. I just play a game for as long as feels right and necessary, you know? And reading all this stuff is fun to me, and hopefully other people would enjoy it as well. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm really enjoying revisiting this series. I'll see you again soon.